Yo, what is going on, Shuffle Squad? I hope you all are having a fantastic day. I'm Vulcan Turtle, and today I'm going to be doing a deck profile on probably one of the worst EXs to come out of the Scarlet and Violet set, Bennett EX. Okay, so you might be wondering to yourself, what does Bennett EX have to offer? And the answer to that is not much. Now, while we're used to cards like Vikavolt V item locking, Bennett does the same thing just a whole lot worse now for one psychic energy you could do everlasting darkness for a pitiful 30 damage but you do get to item lock your opponent now item locking has been known to be somewhat significant and can win matchups but considering this is on a stage one pokemon it makes it a little slow and with 30 damage as the output it makes it not so manageable to win games this way it does have a secondary attack that i do do like poltergeist for 60 times now for a psychic and a colorless you're able to have your opponent reveal their hand and then it'll, you will do 60 damage for each trainer card you find there which in hindsight isn't actually all that bad if you can continuously item lock your opponent you're in the position to have them have a large hand and then swing for huge numbers breaking your item lock but definitely getting a knockout on an extremely important pokemon now who are the partners well let's go over the actual shuppet card that we are evolving from shuppet is a pokemon from scarlet and violet as well has 60 hp which isn't all too great considering that sableye is still a thing but Enveloping Shadow does 10 damage. You flip a coin, and if heads, you can item lock your opponent. So it's actually not too bad in that sense, but again, it's a very pitiful damage output. But what do you expect? It's a basic one prizer. Now, I'm not going to go over just about every card in the deck, but I do want to make some key notes. With the fact that Bennett does have such a pitiful damage output, we did pair it with a older Pokemon. Older as in it came from a thousand years ago, his Sweet Typhlosion is actually kind of interesting. You can use Supernatural Orb to discard a Psychic Energy from your hand, and you can leave your opponent's active Pokemon burned and confused. Now, in between turns, you can do 20 with the burn, but they're confused, and if they don't have a switch option, which they can't use because you've item locked them, they have to manually retreat that Pokemon, and you reduce the amount of energy that they have on the board, which can actually be really good. You can go around things as well by kind of bossing out your opponent using cross switcher or just doing it the old-fashioned way with bosses orders and you can lock a pokemon into place burn confuse them and start swinging 30s all day long until they're kind of in range for a nice poltergeist attack we're playing one copy of drapion because mew is a thing and we are we're playing four copies of mew so that way we can hit things like crushing hammer so we can kind of make our opponent not attack us vip pass we do have two copies of rare candy in this list so we can evolve directly into the typhlosion and we have tons of search in fog crystal and ultra ball so not too shabby here another really cool card that i want to point out is avery avery i think is really good going into this format as it starts to stabilize because we see a lot of the top tier decks playing their bench full and with avery you can maybe just maybe Put a little hindrance on their plan so i really like that card i think it's a really good pick for this deck so over here on the right it's really hard to see on ptcgl but don't worry make sure you check the description the deck list will be down below so let's go ahead and get into a game all right everybody here we go into our first game with bennett ex i if i win this you have to like the video, right? You have to like the video because this is not a deck that wins anything. <laughs> this is a deck that is simply here to annoy your opponent until they get everything they need and then they just start swinging on you. But I do have a little bit of hope for the item lock. I know that there's a better item locker that is currently in the format and I would really like to make a video on that in the future. But hey, with time, it may happen. All right, so we're waiting on our opponent here to possibly flip a coin or just load the game. Uh, but if we win based on that, hey, you gotta like the video, right? The item lock was way too powerful. It just made them quit before they knew what was happening. Let's go! First win, baby! <laughs> okay, here we go with Bennett EX. I have very little expectations for this deck. Uh, Bennett is just way too slow. Considering the fact that we're coming from a format where one of the best item lockers was a single prize or a two prize basic Pokemon that could item lock on turn two or their first turn going second. 
and uh, do a lot more damage than just 30. Yeah. Yeah, Vigavolt definitely outshines the Binette. Definitely outshines the Binette. So let's see if we can actually, like, at least do some shenanigans here. Okay, they're going to shuffle. We are up against Darkrai. Ooh. I don't like that. We are weak to dark. So that is going to be a little bit of a problem. But maybe we can actually turn it into a win for us if we're lucky. You never know. Sometimes your opponent bricks and uh, maybe the item locking just really comes in clutch. Got ourselves a research as well. So not bad. I am going to play the other Mew down because even if they do escape rope, we can just go into the other Mew. It's not a big deal. Okay, so Moltres in the active, Darkrai chilling in the bench. And see, this is where, like, the whole having to wait so long for uh, item locking really hurts us because we are not in the best position. We allow them to have two turns of items, which can make all the difference in the world. Okay, they dumped another Moltres, it looks like, with a energy. Okay, and there is the Darkrai V. I think the biggest target we have to take care of is the coughing. The coughing is actually kind of an issue because coughing being able to double the amount of darkness energy in play is actually or on the coughing itself is kind of a problem because Darkrai loves to have all those energies. Oh, uh, nice. We got ourselves a VIP pass here. Don't hate that at all. Could have possibly went and got the uh, hammer, but you know what? I don't think it was necessary. Let's get ourselves a Greninja and another Shuppet, just in case they do decide to be funny with us. Um, actually, we could have grabbed the Cyndaquil because we have the Fog Crystal. That's fine. We'll go ahead and conceal cards for two. Another Research. I don't want to actually use the Research, though. Let's Avery. Give him a hard choice here. So Mew is definitely going down next turn, no doubt about that. But now they have a Pokemon that is always just going to be able to knock out our Banet. And that is a bit of an issue. We'll grab ourselves a Psychic Energy here. Put it on Banet, and we can VIP pass this and get the Cyndaquil. That is totally okay. Yeah, from here, I think we just pass. Not much else that we can really do. We got the setup for ourselves here on turn one, so... Can't complain, can't complain. So there's the Darkrai V-Star. Do they actually have another? They don't. Oh, but they had the research in hand. So you know what? That works out for them perfectly. Trekking shoes. So yeah, they, they are definitely getting a knockout on our poor little Mew here. Poor little Mew here. But I think one of the interesting things that we could do next turn is we can just forego the item lock altogether and hit it with a Poltergeist. If they have a bunch of item cards in the hand, we can actually just knock out this Moltres. But that's a big if. That's, that's a lot to ask for. That is a lot to ask for. Interesting that they... Okay, yeah, because they wanted a Dark Patch of the Dark Rye. You know what? That's fair. That's fair. But with a hand size that small, our odds of actually having... Like, them having nothing but, like, items in hand, it's extremely slim. Like, extremely slim. I think one of the things that we could do is we could like boss's orders out the room. And there's the aura burn. Five cards in hand. Do we just go for a poltergeist? Uh, I think we do. I mean, I know the odds of them having all of the item cards in hand are extraordinarily slim. But if I'm being honest... I think it's a risk we have to take. We'll go ahead and research. We can Crushing Hammer. Not that it matters too much on the Moltres, but it would hurt the Darkrai, which we don't get there. What we do get, though, is we could do this. I probably want to keep that. We'll do this and this. That will... Hard decision here, actually, because this is our only... Yeah, you know what? Forget it. We'll just go for it. We will go for it. We'll go ahead and Rare Candy into Typhlosion. We don't have much going for us, so we have to get a knockout here. Come on, Poltergeist. 
Oh, we got there. Wow, they had a lot of stuff in the hand. They had a lot of stuff in the hand. So we'll just go ahead and get our two prize cards here. Oh, man. Item lock? Never heard of her. Who needs an item lock when you can just swing for so hard? Okay, so we know that they had a boss's orders and I believe a judge. So that is something to be a little wary of. And even if they just attach one energy, one more energy to the dark ride, they don't get a knockout on our bin net, which is huge. Probably going to dump some item cards here or some uh, trainer cards that they're not going to want to use just so we can't poltergeist knock out the dark ride. Yeah, there goes judge. So I believe one of the only other cards they had in hand was boss's orders. But if they have an energy. They can vroom it actually. So yeah, they can just uh, go ahead and use the uh, rumbling engine. Oh, youngster. Okay, they had a youngster. Didn't even realize. Maybe I should like when I do that, read my opponent's hand. Like really make sure I know what's in there. Because <laughs> that might actually be kind of useful. Okay, so we're going to see a rumbling engine here to draw six or up to six. And there's the wheezing. So now we're in some major trouble because if that wheezing starts doing things, we are done skis. Being able to double the amount of energy on the wheezing just makes the dark ride even more unbearable and hard to deal with. So we got to make sure we play our cards right here. Okay, Star Abyss. Ooh, probably going to go get double uh, Dark Patch. Yeah. Well, they played a Trekking Shoes, actually. Did they only have one Dark Patch in the discard? Setting up another Dark Ride here makes sense. There's the Dark Patch. So four on, in play. I definitely think they get a knockout now. Because that is 30, 60, uh, 90, 120. Yeah, 300 damage. Good this okay could be fine we do have typhlosion we could possibly pull something off here let's go ahead and crushing hammer missed it okay that is fine that is fine uh we need two energies nice we got there we got there and another crushing hammer that's actually huge oh my goodness all the tails all the tails Okay, let's attach here. Use this ability to burn and confuse Darkrai. Make him try to hit us through an actual special condition. Might make things a little more difficult for them. And we will Everlasting Darkness. 30 damage and another 20 from the burn. They cannot switch unless they manually retreat. And I believe they just got rid of the burn. But they're confused, so... They can't use a switch card. They have to manually retreat or just try to swing through their confusion for a knockout on Bennett EX. Honestly, I think going for the uh, swing probably would make a lot more sense than uh, retreating because it's not like you have another Darkrai V-Star on the bench ready to swing. But it looks like they're trying to get it there. They are trying to get it there. That is a big hand. Do I Poltergeist next turn? to try and get the knockout here but then this homie is a problem judge okay so you know what no we are not gonna poltergeist the four card hand i don't think that's a possibility do you have an avery now we can uh, actually use avery to draw three they don't have uh, more than three pokemon on the bench so we're not actually going to be able to discard anything but we will see what happens they judge they're not evolving that dark cry and oh no we just lost we just lost we can't item lock anymore shuppets are gone Bennett's are gone the only thing that we, i guess we could do is shadow bind but now we just lose the game oh that's so terrible because they could just retreat all right we'll, we'll try and play things out here we'll try and play things out let's just go ahead and crushing hammer for nothing i think that was all crushing hammer tails yikes Mysterious Tail here. Got ourselves an Ultra Ball. Alright, we're going to Supernatural Orb and then pass the turn. Uh, I guess we could attach. Yeah, that's, that's the best that we're going to be able to do here. They flipped through the heads. 
got rid of the burn too my opponent just was flipping all those heads man flipping all the heads and we just got no heads we just kept flipping like the tail no heads for us i don't think we we flipped a single heads this entire game not a single one there's the switch and then they can just manually retreat and attack so that is oh they can actually just suffocate in gas no our mew all right so that is a very unfortunate very unfortunate matchup too but hey you win you lose okay here we are in game three technically since we didn't get the first game <laughs> but game three we will see who gets to go first here it looks like some sort of maybe psychic deck they could be psyching us out with the coin and ooh, we will go first thank you very much let's see if we can get a decent start here though and no no we cannot get a decent start i mean the double shop it setup isn't too bad we do have a fog crystal in the hand looks like we are up against miraidon so miraidon reggie lecky we'll see if shop it or Bennett have the ability to actually take this list down i have a little bit of doubt all right so we can definitely bench this because if they do set up a uh if they set up their homie the uh raiko if they can do that easily we're gonna be in a little bit of trouble let's get rid of a cross switcher and a cyndaquil unfortunately cyndaquil's got to go bye bye we do have one in the deck fortunately all right we're gonna get a greninja so we can draw two cards just feels feels good conceal cards here we'll be able to draw two cards got ourselves an avery avery is really good in this matchup let's go ahead and attach and pass yeah so if they're able to set up their raiko in one turn and get a knockout on the shuppet it, it is what it is they're playing crushing hammer okay and they can flip heads i swear i'm gonna i'm gonna play these two crushing hammers down next turn watch they're gonna be able to set up some stuff we're gonna play these crushing hammers they're gonna be tails if they're heads i will lose it because we never flip heads on crushing hammer crushing hammer is a very good card when it works and unfortunately for us it just never works okay so there is the raiko v a reggie lucky v right on using that tandem unit attaching it to the reggie lucky v okay interesting i was kind of expecting them to uh go in with the uh raiko but no no raiko play All right, so now it is our turn. We can draw a card. We got ourselves a basic energy. Very nice. Let's go ahead and Avery. Not looking too good here. We do have two energy in the discard. So why don't we actually go and grab them? Now seems like it'd be a good time. We can conceal cards. Draw two. A research and another Shepard. Okay, let's go ahead and dump the VIP pass probably dump this other energy now too and get ourselves a bonnet here's the difficult part about this matchup as well if they only build up the reggie lucky and lightning wall we literally can't win because we won't do any damage no way we actually got a heads on crushing hammer let's go busted card all right everlasting darkness swing 30 no items are now available to our opponent so you can get a turn to lock on your opponent going first it's possible so it gives it the same you know it gives it the same uh speed as reggie like v going first in that instance but unfortunately it's just not that good because you're only doing 30 damage it's really not much ways to boost that damage output all right they're getting all sorts of filled up here jolteon v in the list as well okay Christian hammer's going bye bye and they have a bunch of pokemon with free retreat or one retreat cost so we are in a little bit of trouble let's see if we can actually knock that energy off the raiko v no we didn't quite get there but we can put the shop it down and research another hammer could actually be decent let's see nice so yeah we do slow them down this does stop them from using their electric generator as well which is always good we will conceal cards here 
Uh, nothing great, nothing great. Let's go ahead and Everlasting Darkness. We'll do 30 damage to the Regilecki VMAX. And if they keep building up a giant hand, we could Poltergeist and take a huge knockout on a 3 prizer. Although I think the true threat comes from the Raikou since it's so cheap to build. So, then that's the other thing. We use the Poltergeist, right? And what ends up happening is we open them back up to item cards. And if we open them up to item cards, they can just build up any of the other Pokemon. So that's going to be a little bit of an issue. Got ourselves a Fog Crystal here. I'm going to say we just go for the Poltergeist. If we can get a knock on the Raikou V, we can start doing some boss shenanigans later. So, no, oh, they scooped. Okay, very well. Maybe uh, we were actually going to possibly going to get a knockout with that Poltergeist. So, who knows? Who knows why they did it? But hey, we'll take the win. <laughs> so, that is going to be today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Benet EX is a not a great card i don't know what you could do to make it busted i don't know if you need to play it for literally just the poltergeist instead of the item lock but for the item lock it's just not great it's too slow and clunky and the damage output is awful the poltergeist could actually be interesting and could be used in a lot of different ways so i do kind of enjoy that but if you want to play Bennett and if you want to play this list, make sure you check out the description because that is where you can find it. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, be safe and I'll see you next Thursday. The Shuffle Squad is proudly sponsored by Atlas Collectibles, the best place to buy any trading card game product online. Visit atlastcg.com and at the checkout screen, make sure to use code TSS12 to save an unbeatable 12% off your entire order. Atlas Collectibles will ship your product anywhere in the world, so make sure you're taking advantage of the 12% savings with TSS12. And if Pokemon is not your thing, don't worry. Go to atlastcg.com and see all the other amazing trading card game products they have there to offer. The Shuffle Squad has partnered with PTCGO Store to provide our community with the best access to Pokemon TCG codes. They have codes available 24 seven, instant email delivery, and you can save 5% off by using code TSS5. If you're a YouTube member or Patreon supporter, you'll have access to a special code that gets you 10% off. So what are you waiting for? Use code TSS5 today and save 5% on your next order of codes on any codes available at ptcgostore.com. Are you trying to be the best like no one ever was? Now is your time. Head on over to metafy.gg and search out all our amazing Pokemon TCG coaches where you can book all sorts of training plans ranging from deck help to full season sessions with your favorite coach. What a great way to up your game. Check out metafy.gg in the description below and take your game to the next level. Challenge yourself against trainers from around the world to compete for the biggest online prizing yet. Are you ready for an unbelievable tournament unlike anything else you've ever seen before? The Shuffle Squad is proud to announce our newest tournament series, The Late Night Event, with an amazing grand prize that's bound to have you excited. Players can compete via play.limitless.tcg.com's online tournament platform every Tuesday to get a chance to earn weekly prizes and every week, your placement in the tournament is tallied by points based on your best finishes to earn your rank for the late night invitational event. The series will be conducted starting February 7th of 2023 and carry all the way through to the invitational on July 9th of 2023, where the top players will be rewarded the grand prizing. And the grand prize is a signed jersey and photo op with the entire Shuffle Squad, as well as a fully paid trip to the Pokemon World Championships in Yokohama, Japan. This includes hotel and airfare, whether you're a player or a spectator. Don't forget to check out all the live coverage on our YouTube and Twitch channel of the top cuts of these events for every week. And subscribe so you can get notified where to watch the late night events invitational brought to you by the Shuffle Squad. Now get out there and start winning. We'll see you in Japan.